Imagine a world locked in the grip of an endless winter. Glaciers carve the earth, and frost clings to every surface. The air bites at your skin, and the horizon stretches across a tundra where mammoths roam and predators lurk. This is the world of the Neanderthals, a human species that thrived for 300,000 years in a landscape that would break most of us today. Their story isn't just about survival, it's about ingenuity, resilience, and a deep connection to a wild, untamed planet. In this journey, we'll uncover how Neanderthals became masters of their prehistoric domain, how they faced catastrophic climate shifts, and why their disappearance still haunts us. Stick with me because this isn't just a story of the past, it's a mirror to our own humanity. The Neanderthal's world was a theater of extremes. For most of their 300,000-year existence, Eurasia was a frozen expanse. Temperatures often plummeted to minus 20 degrees Celsius, and sea levels were so low that coastlines extended far beyond where they sit today. Picture a Europe where the English Channel was a grassy plain, and the Mediterranean was a fraction of its current size. This wasn't a world for the faint-hearted. It demanded physical and mental toughness. Neanderthals were built for this. Their bodies were stocky, with short limbs to conserve heat, and their noses were wide and cavernous, acting like natural humidifiers to warm the frigid air they breathed. Their lungs were massive, their rib cages broad, pumping oxygen to fuel their high-energy lives. Think of them as the ultimate cold-weather athletes, engineered by evolution to endure where others would falter. But it wasn't just their bodies that made them formidable. Neanderthals had brains as large as, or larger than ours. Their skulls, with sloping foreheads and heavy brow ridges, house minds capable of planning, problem-solving, and innovation. They weren't the brutish cavemen of old stereotypes. They were thinkers, planners, and survivors. When I think about Neanderthals, I'm struck by how their physical adaptations mirror the way modern humans adapt to extreme environments today, like high-altitude Sherpas or Arctic Inuit communities. Their bodies were their technology, sculpted by nature to meet the challenges of their time. It makes you wonder, if we faced a new ice age, how would we adapt? Could our reliance on modern tools make us less resilient than our ancient cousins? In a world without metal or machines, Neanderthals turned stone into power. Their mastery of flint napping, the art of shaping stone into tools, was a game changer. The Lavalois technique, a hallmark of Neanderthal ingenuity, allowed them to pre-plan the shape of flint flakes, creating razor-sharp points for spears or scrapers for hides. This wasn't random rock smashing, it was precision engineering. Imagine a Neanderthal crouched by a fire, striking a flint core with a deer antler. Each blow is calculated, the result a perfect triangular blade. These tools weren't just for survival, they were weapons of dominance. With them, Neanderthals hunted massive beasts like bison and woolly rhinos, animals that could crush a human with a single charge. The Lavalois method showed foresight, a cognitive leap that let them visualize the end product before the first strike. The Lavalois technique feels like the prehistoric equivalent of 3D printing. It's not just about making a tool, it's about imagining its purpose and planning its creation. This level of abstraction suggests Neanderthals had complex thought processes, maybe not so different from ours when we design apps or build furniture. It's a reminder that intelligence isn't just about language or art, it's about solving problems in a harsh world. Neanderthals were nomads, but not wanderers. Their movements were deliberate, tied to the rhythms of their environment. Sites like Cahors in northern France reveal how they used rivers as highways, 
hunting grounds, and butchering stations. At Cahors 123,000 years ago, Neanderthals targeted large animals in soft riverbank soil, where beasts like aurochs were vulnerable. They didn't just hunt, they disassembled their kills with surgical precision, transporting meat to temporary camps. On the island of Jersey, the St. Berlade site shows how Neanderthals used natural landmarks like cliffs to spot prey or rivals from afar. The landscape wasn't just a backdrop, it was their map, their calendar, their survival guide. They moved across territories spanning tens of kilometers, carrying flint tools from distant sources, suggesting a deep knowledge of their world. Neanderthal nomadism reminds me of modern logistics networks. They had supply chains, flint from one region, meat from another, all coordinated across a vast, unforgiving landscape. This wasn't chaos, it was strategy. Their ability to plan movements across seasons and terrains shows a level of organization we often underestimate in prehistoric peoples. Neanderthals didn't just survive the cold, they thrived through climate swings. The Wazir site in France, where Pete preserved a 130,000-year-old ecosystem, shows a transition from Arctic steppe to temperate forest. Pine and birch gave way to oak and ash as the climate warmed, then reverted to boreal forests as the ice returned. Neanderthals adapted to each shift, hunting different animals and exploiting new resources. This flexibility was key. During interglacial periods, when forests thickened, they navigated dense woodlands to track deer and boar. In colder times, they chased reindeer and mammoths across open tundras. Their ability to pivot between environments shows a profound understanding of nature's cycles. I find this adaptability inspiring. It's like how we've had to pivot during global crises. Think of businesses shifting to remote work during a pandemic or farmers adapting to drought. Neanderthals didn't have technology, but they had instinct and experience, reading the land like we read data. It makes you question whether our modern tools make us more adaptable or just more dependent. Neanderthals were apex predators, not because of brute strength, but because of strategy. At sites like Cahors, they targeted massive animals, rhinoceroses weighing over three tons, mammoths twice that. These weren't solo hunts. They required teamwork, planning, and trust. Imagine a group of 20 Neanderthals, spears in hand, coordinating to drive a mammoth into a canyon or bog. One wrong move, and the hunter becomes the hunted. Their tools, like Lavalois-tipped spears, were deadly, but their real weapon was knowledge. They knew where animals migrated, when rivers swelled, and how to exploit terrain. This wasn't just hunting, it was warfare against nature's giants. Think of a modern sports team, say a soccer squad, executing a play. Each player has a role, and success depends on trust and timing. Neanderthal hunts were like that, but the stakes were life and death. Their ability to coordinate suggests a level of social cohesion we still strive for today. Did Neanderthals have language? Their vocal tracks with a higher larynx suggest they could produce complex sounds, maybe higher pitch than ours. Their ear bones indicate they heard frequencies similar to ours, a prerequisite for language. But did they string words together like we do? Some researchers argue they had a proto-language, rich enough to coordinate hunts or share knowledge. Others suggest their communication relied on gestures, sounds, or even song. Imagine a Neanderthal group chanting to synchronize a hunt, building trust through rhythm. It's not Shakespeare, but it's communication that worked. I lean toward the idea that Neanderthals had a form of language, even if it wasn't as complex as ours. Think of how animals like wolves or dolphins communicate through sounds, body language, and context. Neanderthals, with their big brains, 
likely took this further, maybe using proto-words or melodies to convey plans. It's a humbling reminder that language isn't just words, it's connection. The Brunichel Cave in France, dated to 175,000 years ago, holds a mystery. A circular structure made of 400 stalagmite pieces. Was it a ritual site, a storage area, or something else? At St. Berlade, bone piles arranged with care hint at deliberate design, maybe even reverence. In Gibraltar's Gorham Cave, engraved lines dubbed the first hashtag spark debate about symbolic thought. These finds suggest Neanderthals could think beyond survival, creating order from chaos. But unlike Homo sapiens who left necklaces in cave paintings, Neanderthal art is rare and ambiguous. Were they expressing something deeper or just organizing their space? I see these structures as early experiments in meaning making. Like a child stacking blocks to create something cool, Neanderthals might have been exploring their world's possibilities. It's not Sistine Chapel art, but it's a step toward the human impulse to leave a mark. It makes me wonder, what's the line between utility and creativity? Around 50,000 years ago, Homo sapiens entered Europe, a new player on the Neanderthal stage. In the Mandarin cave, evidence shows brief overlaps. Homo sapiens flint tools appear, then vanish before Neanderthals return. By 42,000 years ago, Homo sapiens were back and Neanderthals were gone. Genetic studies reveal interbreeding, with modern humans carrying 1-2% Neanderthal DNA today. But this mixing didn't save them. Neanderthals' low genetic diversity and stable culture couldn't compete with Homo sapiens' innovation and adaptability. Their extinction wasn't a single blow, it was a slow fade. The meeting of Neanderthals and Homo sapiens feels like a cosmic tragedy. Two intelligent species, so close yet so different, sharing the same earth but not the same fate. It's like two companies in a market. One innovates rapidly, the other sticks to tradition and fades. Neanderthals weren't inferior, they were just outpaced. To bring the Neanderthal world to life, let's imagine a few scenes based on archaeological evidence. The Cahors Hunt, 123,000 years ago. A group of 25 Neanderthals, men and women, crouch by a riverbank in what's now northern France. The air is humid, the forest dense with oak. They've tracked a herd of aurochs, massive cattle-like beasts. One Neanderthal, gripping a Levallois-tipped spear, signals with a low grunt. The group fans out, driving the aurochs toward the soft mud. A young bull stumbles and the hunters strike, their coordination flawless. By nightfall, they're butchering the kill, sharing meat under a starlit sky. The Jersey Lookout, 200,000 years ago, high on a cliff in what's now Jersey, a Neanderthal stands watch. Below, a plain stretches to the horizon, dotted with mammoths. She carries a flint scraper from a quarry 30 kilometers away a tool her group traded for. Spotting a herd, she signals to hunters below, her sharp eyes reading the landscape like a map. This cliff isn't just a vantage point, it's their fortress, their command center. The Bruniquel Circle, 175,000 years ago. Deep in a French cave, a group of Neanderthals arranges stalagmite pieces in a circle. Firelight flickers on the walls. Are they marking a sacred space, storing tools, or simply creating something beautiful. No one speaks, but their movements are synchronized, a silent agreement. The structure stands as a testament to their shared purpose, a mystery we're still unraveling. These stories ground the science in something tangible. They remind me of modern communities, like a family farm where everyone knows their role, or a team building a monument together. Neanderthals weren't just surviving, they were living with purpose and connection.
What can we learn from the Neanderthals? Their story isn't just about extinction. It's about resilience, adaptation, and the delicate balance of survival. They thrived for 300,000 years, outlasting countless challenges because they understood their world deeply. They didn't have smartphones or cities, but they had ingenuity, community, and a bond with nature we've largely lost. Today, as we face climate change, resource scarcity, and social division, the Neanderthals remind us to stay adaptable, to work together, and to respect the world we inhabit. Their extinction warns us that even the strongest can fall if they can't evolve fast enough. Let's take their lesson to heart. Embrace change, build trust, and never stop learning from the world around us.